Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to be giving you guys a tour of the Brooklyn Museum of Art. Hey, right off the elevator. And uh, I'm on the second floor. Huge museum, maybe not as big as the Met, but uh, this is a big place. And uh, as soon as I got off the elevator, there's a beautiful restored uh, Buddhist statue that uh, was uh, salvaged from China. The Buddhist goddess of dawn, Mariaki. So I'm in the Asian section, guys. A lot of these statues were salvaged from Asian countries. I'm in the Buddhist uh, section of the museum where a lot of Buddhist art, sculptures mostly, salvaged from Asian countries are present and displayed I'm surprised at how well preserved so many of them are. Uh, incredible stuff here. Um, wait, this museum is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Fascinating uh, assortment of vases and jugs wine jugs all from china porcelain a lot of them are made from porcelain uh, and, and a lot of these are from the uh 1500s this here is from the 1300s the hong wu period 1368 to 98 they used to use pigment to color the ceramic jugs they would use uh um, Painting porcelain in underglaze red using copper oxide pigment. That's how they used to. That's how they used to paint back then, using uh, copper-based pigment. Pigments, incredible, really incredible. Beautiful, beautiful china. Yeah. It, it looks like these just came out of Bed Bath and Beyond. It's incredible. And yet, they were salvaged hundreds of years ago. These statues are incredible. A lot of them are from the 12th century. Buddhist statues recovered from temples throughout Asia, ranging from Thailand to Japan. Incredible stuff, guys. We're now entering the Himalayan section. A lot of Buddhist and also Hindu sculptures these are all religious a lot of these were uh, recovered from temples throughout tibet china korea you name it all throughout asia wow guys here we have a statue from the eighth century incredible it's a statue of the green tara uh, she's a goddess associated with buddhism and uh, this statue was salvaged from an indian temple a buddhist indian temple one of the earliest indian buddhist temples uh, incredible Incredible. Green Tara. Everything is there exactly where it's from. India, Odisha, 8th century. They even tell you who donated the statue to the museum. A lot of these were from private collections. from a temple in India where Buddhism first emerged. Okay, I'm now on the third floor. I'm in the abstract art section of the museum. A lot of abstract art. We're starting to get into the areas where there's a lot of paintings. This room is absolutely stunning. I'm trying to get information on the chandelier here. It looks like the one, the ones you see in Grand Central Terminal. I wonder if this is some sort of uh, art piece or just uh, one of the museum's 
chandeliers. Uh, it's gorgeous nonetheless. This room is stunning. If you love abstracts, I think the Brooklyn Museum is the place to go. There's some amazing pieces displayed here. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of abstract art, but uh, if it's displayed in a certain manner, it truly, truly is a sight to behold. As you can see here, guys, this is incredible. Check this out, a board game known as Senate. This board game was salvaged from uh, an unknown uh, provenance, uh, but it was purchased from a museum said to be uh, 1,600 years old. Unbelievable. We're in the Egyptian section here, guys. Egyptian art section. Old Kingdom. The Old Kingdom section. A lot of this art is over 2,500 years old. A lot of these sculptures are ancient, man. Like, really ancient. This here, 2,500-year-old statue depicting a family. just a family statue of uh, the Nakara family. Uh, incredible stuff, incredible. It's a limestone carved statue. Right, let's check this out, a sarcophagus, 2500 BC. And they give you the exact year, um, 2555. Salvaged from Giza from a cemetery in Giza in Egypt. It's a royal tomb. It housed the mummy of a prince or possibly the prince's wife. Made of granite. Wow. Check out this knife, guys. Made of ivory, supposedly from elephant tusks. 3300 BC. This thing is over 3,000, uh, make that uh, 5,000 years old. Okay, we're still in the African section, guys. The Egyptian, ancient Egyptian art. A lot of these statues that you see are, uh, a lot of them are without their nose. The noses are shaved off. I've noticed this in the other museums I visited, and I've never realized why. I, I initially thought that the reason why many of these statues don't have noses is because, uh, the, you know, they just deteriorated over time. They're old. They broke off. And so a lot of these statues don't have noses, and it's because they were deliberately carved off. See, uh, here it says, why are the noses broken? A lot of these statues, uh, ancient Egyptian statues, the noses on them were broken on purpose. Um, there's many reasons why. Uh, and uh, if you wanna know why, you can pause the video here and have a read. This here is a cartonage from 945 BC. And uh, I love how they give you a description of what the artwork on these cartonages symbolize. A lot of it has to do with resurre resurrection and afterlife and, and things like that. Incredible what the cultures back then believed in. Those ancient religions truly believed in, in, in the afterlife and maybe it was a way of uh, coping but uh, uh, the afterlife is a huge huge theme when it comes to these uh, uh, ancient religious Egyptian cultures in the Macedonian periods especially 
uh, the, the, the amazing display here is just mind blowing. Truly is one of the best museums I've ever been to. And I've, I've, I haven't even, I'm not even done with this place yet. There's so much more left to see. I, I am just stunned. I could spend all day in this room alone. This is unbelievable, a limestone sarcophagus. 305 BC. Now, a lot of these um, coffins have different names. I don't think this is a sarcophagus, uh, but they're incredible. And, and you can see like paintings of Anubis there, the, the Eye of Horus. And uh, oddly enough, uh, there's no description about this one's origin. So I guess when that happens, the origins are unknown and things like that. A lot of these just came about and uh, no one knows where they're from or when. Here's another from. situation, province unknown, year unknown. This coffin is unbelievable. Looks like it's made of wood. Un freaking believable and the artwork on it alone is just stunning and uh, I told the uh, I was told that there are no actual mummies inside these so <laughs> there are no dead bodies inside these it's just the uh, the coffins or in this case, cartonages. These are not, this is not a sarcophagus. A sarcophagus is different than a cartonage. This is the cartonage of a priest from Thebes, 712 BC. They were made with plaster. This is such a peaceful museum. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's not as packed as the ones in Manhattan. The ones in Manhattan are just packed all the time. And... The Book of the Dead. Wow. Oh, look at that. Looks like a, a drawing of a hawk or a falcon. The afterlife was, was, was a big, big theme in ancient Egyptian culture. It's fascinating because, you know, that's what they believed in. It, it was all conjecture. It was all a, a means of uh, coping with the loss of loved ones. And uh, I wish I knew what this stuff meant. They do give descriptions, and most of it all has to do with rebirth and uh, coming back to Earth in another body. Immortality, which is a huge, huge topic, not only in uh, ancient Egyptian religion, but uh, many others many other religions as well. Right, so now I'm on the fourth floor, guys, and there's a lot of contemporary art here from the 20th century. Um, I think I'm in a special exhibit here. Uh, single artist, Nellie Mae Rowe. Uh, I believe she was an African woman. Uh, this is her exhibit. It's possible that this is a temporary exhibit. The radical art of uh, Nellie May Rowe. Yeah. 
yeah, here she is. If you want to know more about her, uh, you can pause the video here and have a read. Check this thing out. Somebody decided to wrap a piano around the tree. Wow. If you want to know more about this artwork, guys, the sculpture here, you can uh, pause the video. It's from 2007. We're in a contemporary art section here, guys. A lot of this stuff is from the 20th century. Oh, man. Uh, look at this. Somebody took a bunch of dolls and decided to make a couch. <laughs> 1974 a plush toy chair oh wow look at this this is a preserved study from a Manhattan apartment 525 Park Avenue 1930 Art Deco oh my goodness I'm a sucker for Art Deco. Look at that lamp. Look at that chandelier. Look at the light fixtures. Looks like an encyclopedia there housed in the wall. Wow. Wow. Glass art. This here is a piece of art made by a glass artist, an American glass artist. Charles Lamb. Okay, he finished this in, in 1900. And it's, uh, the connotations are absolutely Christian. You've got the Archangel Gabriel and Michael to the left and right. Michael on the left represents the military. Gabriel represents triumph. And it's, it's absolutely stunning. Okay, we got some paintings, guys. I'm on the fifth floor. This is where most of the paintings are. And here we have old Georgie. Portrait of George Washington painted by a Philadelphia painter American painter with Charles Peel, painted in 1776. Wow. Okay, here's one of the museum centerpieces, one of their main attractions. The name of this painting is called Rocky Mountain. And I'm, I'm just, just look at the lighting, look at the sunlight. How do you paint that? Superb. American born in Germany. German-American. Painted in 1866. A storm in the Rocky Mountains. Dramatic weather. Oil on canvas. Unbelievable. Painted by Albert Bierstadt. Guys, I can't get enough of this painting. The texture of the rocks, the detail is unreal. Looks like a dead deer. There's some hunting going on. People chasing wild horses. Looks like a, a, a TP encampment right there. Cow. This is an absolute masterpiece. Just look at the tonal range when it comes to the highlights, the shadows. An uprooted tree right there. Look at the bark. Look at that texture. 
This is an absolutely stunning painting. Oh my goodness. This one here, just completely, completely smitten by it, guys. It's called A Winter Scene in Brooklyn. Painted by a Brooklyn painter known as Francis Guy. This was painted in about 1819, and it depicts the neighborhood, what is now known as Dumbo, Brooklyn. And he painted this from his studio on Front Street. And I love Front Street. It's one of my favorite parts of the city. And this uh, painting here depicts uh, Brooklynites socializing, feeding chickens. The painting portrays a range of classes from manual laborers to merchants including a large concentration of Brooklyn's free African-American population. So it's, it's a painting from 1819, and uh, I assume it's an accurate depiction of what he saw from his studio in Brooklyn. Uh, this basically doesn't exist anymore. This is how it used to look. Uh, Brooklyn has completely changed since those times and it, it's a shame because a lot of these old neighborhoods in New York City were torn down and rebuilt and uh, the only way to go back and realize how it used to be is through artwork uh, and uh, this is stunning to see it's it's incredible to think that this was Brooklyn and and you know 1820 compared to 1850 is uh, it's a, just a complete difference because the difference between the early 1800s and 18 and the mid uh, 19th century is astronomical. Uh, that was the time when the old was torn down and uh, the city was re-urbanized all over again. Unbelievable. Look at the sun here. Look at the sun. Look at that sunlight. Painted by Frederick, Frederick Church, 1873. Tropical scene in South America. Fascinating. This one's a beauty. Painted by William Keat, 1881. A Scottish American. It's a scene in Oregon which depicts the removal of Native, Native Americans. It's a view of how the railroad to the west led to the removal of Native Americans. Amazing detail. Wow. The history here, guys. Brooklyn. The original name of this terrain known as Brooklyn, New York, used to be known as the Nape Hoking. And uh, Europeans arrived in the 1600s, Dutch, Germans, British. And uh, supposedly the European settlers came here to seek haven from religious persecution a lot of jews came here so they can own property and things like that which they couldn't do in europe and uh their relations with the local natives the lenape indians was supposedly mostly peaceful uh, a lot of the lands were purchased through treaties but then the lenape population wound up decimated by disease massacres forceful removals and in just a hundred years by the year 1700 only 3,000 Lenape Indians remained most of them were relocated in Wisconsin Canada Minnesota driven to the West incredible uh, history here it's just, it, it was only a hundred, a few hundred years ago too, 1600. Not a long time ago at all. Well guys, that was a 
great experience. Uh, I didn't know they closed 15 minutes before closing. Uh, I spent a good two hours here. I think I've seen most of everything, which I can't say the same for the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which uh, is humongous. Uh, but uh, this museum, I think uh, two hours, you might be able to see everything. Maybe not everything, but most. And, uh, you know, when you look at the building from the outside, it's humongous. It's tremendous. Now, this new facility here is not part of the old museum. This is a, a, a new, newly built lobby, which I don't like. It has, uh, it doesn't really feel like uh, it belongs here because it's so modern let me take a step back here it's so modern that it just doesn't fit I mean look at that beautiful Bo Beaux Arts architecture look at the architecture of this building it's Beaux Arts you can see guys as I take a step back that beautiful museum doesn't seem to uh go well with the new lobby here this glass enclosure this newly built lobby which just doesn't fit it just seems out of place that building that beautiful uh, Beaux Arts architecture that beautiful Beaux Arts architecture stands in stark contrast to this glass enclosure here but uh, hey, it is what it is. It's still a beautiful place. It's a huge building. Yet it feels so much smaller than the Metropolitan Museum. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this little tour. Be sure to like and sub. Here we are guys. One last look at the Brooklyn Museum, folks. Take care guys. Hope you enjoyed it.